We're glad you've chosen to listen to our weekly talkback. The weekly talkback is designed to take a portion of the teaching from this week to a deeper level. You may want to listen to this week's teaching, but it isn't necessary to understand the weekly talkback. If you'd like to connect further, feel free to reach out to us through our website, kanoichurch.org. For now, enjoy the weekly talkback from Kanoi Church, where our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not always easy to find people you can rely on. I hear from business owners on a regular basis that they can't find good help. It's not that they can't find help. There's always people that will fill an application out and take a job, but it's good help they can't find. People who will do the job right or show up on time. I think we can each relate to having people in our lives who are generally unreliable. And so we continue to cultivate a life that doesn't require that we rely on other people because finding people to rely on is hard. So when we think about how we rely on one another or when we think about relying on someone, it doesn't feel good. We don't feel comfortable with it. We certainly don't want to do it. And so when we talk in a service about how we need to rely on God and then we go even further and say, hey, we depend on God, boy, That can be really hard to take and really hard to swallow. Last night, after I got home from church, my son wanted some water. And my wife's sitting on the couch, and my kids are sitting on a different couch, and I came into the room, and my son goes, Daddy, I want some more water. And I said, hey, your water bottle's right there. And Carissa tossed it to him, and he said, it's empty. And Chris has said, you know, daddy doesn't have to get you water. You are completely capable of getting water on your own at the sink. And he looked up at me and he said, but the lid is too tight. I can't turn it. And so I took the water bottle and opened it up for him. That's just a little story about how my son is reliant on me. Because there are certain limitations that he has. As a young child... Yeah, he can't open the lid to his water bottle sometimes to get himself more water. He's relying on me. When I think about being reliant on God, I think about what it's like to be a child and needing my parents all over again. My parents that would buy me clothes so that I had clothes to wear. My mom who would do my laundry so that my clothes were clean. My father who had the job that provided us the ability to go out and buy a winter coat. My parents who drove me to sports practices or play practices or whatever that might be that they had to drive me to. I was so dependent upon my parents as a child. We were all dependent on our parents at one point or another. None of us got here where we are by ourselves. When I was in college, one of the classes I took was a class on caving. That's right, caving. Like spelunking. Like putting on a hard hat with a light attached to it and crawling around in caves. Now, we went to all sorts of different caves and learned a bunch of different stuff during the class, but the whole class culminated in one big test, and the test was a caving rescue. Many of us in the class, myself included, was a first responder. And so there was somebody, we we, we kind of, we went into this cave. We went deep into this cave. I mean, further than you ever want to be underground. And we get to the kind of the end of the cave and the instructor says, all right, I need a volunteer to be hurt. And so everybody kind of looked around at each other in the lights in the dark No one wanted to raise their hand. And finally, somebody said, all right, I'll do it. And you know, if we had really thought about it as students, it had been pretty good if we had gotten like the littlest person in the class to volunteer for that job. But it wasn't the littlest person in the class that volunteered for that job. And so we all knew that we had quite an endeavor ahead of us. And so we had a special basket that would strap the person into it. And the rest of the class had to get this person out of the cave. And it took us seven hours to get this person out of the cave. That person was completely reliant on us. Now, were they really injured? No. But once we got them into the emergency basket and they were strapped in, they couldn't move. They couldn't use their hands, their legs, nothing. 
And so as we carried them out of the cave, as we lifted them from one crevice to the next, as we set up belay lines and anchors, and in some places had to belay them up or down 25 feet, if we dropped them, they really would get hurt. If we didn't continue to take care of their actual needs, like monitoring their blood pressure and their pulse and making sure they were getting water, they could have actually gotten dehydrated. They could have actually been injured. This young man was dependent upon his classmates to get him out. I think about how many uh, first responders we have, paramedics, EMTs, police officers, who go out of their way all the time to run toward the thing that everyone else is running away from to lend a helping hand. And the people that they're lending a hand to are often completely dependent on them. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that none of us are alone. And when we think about relying on someone other than ourselves, it might be hard for us to swallow, but we do it all the time. Guys, if we can't admit that we can rely on God, then we're only ever going to get so far. In last week's talk back, we talked about the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and had the courage to ask him, Lord, what can I do? Where do I lack? And Jesus' response to him was, if you want to be perfect, and the word perfect could also mean complete or mature. Guys, if we can't admit that we rely on God, our maturity in Christ is only ever going to go so far. God has numbered the beats of your heart, and he has numbered the breaths in your lungs. And none of us know what that count actually is, but God does. Don't waste any beats and don't waste any breath by pretending like you're in this thing alone. Even if you legitimately in your whole life, can't find a single person to rely on. God stands with you in this life, and you can rely on him. Let me tell you one last story, true story, of a pastor doing a funeral. It's a funeral of a young man, and the pastor gets up to give his message after the eulogy is done and the sharing time is done, and the pastor is pushing the congregation pretty hard. He's saying, none of us know. This young person has passed away right in front of us. None of us know how much time we are given, and so none of us must waste that time. None of us know. None of us know. And so make sure that you're living the life that you actually want to live, that you're living the life that actually honors God. He wrapped up his message He sat down on a chair on the side of the stage, and he died. Almost instantaneously, the pastor died in that chair. I can think of no greater way to emphasize the message he was giving than for him to pass away in this very moment. As sad as it is, I believe there is a plan for this. Then for his final words to be encouraging the congregation that was in front of him, to live the life that they wanted to live, to live the life that would honor God. That is our call as well, not to waste this life and not to waste these breaths, not to waste these heartbeats. If we can get over the fact that we are relying on God, we move to a new level of maturity, recognizing that our strength is found in him. Our strength is found when our strength is at an end. Join me today in trusting God. And if you're not sure what that looks like, then I invite you to call me or email me or get a hold of me on a Sunday morning so that I can sit and talk with you and pray with you about what those next steps might be. Hi, this is Pastor Nick. Thanks for listening. I hope something that you heard today was very helpful. If you want to connect with us further, feel free to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or our website, kanoichurch.org. Sure, I'm glad we're in this together. Thank you.